Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> I guess you're gonna join me on this magical journey into the land of the Brigamore Witches, which appears to do with Delilah, a woman wearing a dress who might be a witch and is maybe blessed by the stranger. Let's find out more, shall we? New game. A save game of Life of Dunwall has been found. You can use your progression in the Brigamar Witches. You will retrieve your equipment and powers. Which progression do you want to use? Low Chaos. You've chosen Low Chaos progression for Life of Dunwall, Brigamar Witches. Yes. I shall play on Veteran Mode. Creating a new game will overwrite previous Brigmore Witches autosaves. Continue. Meanwhile, back at the hideout, you've been ill at ease ever since you assassinated Empress Jessamine Caldwin and aided in the abduction of her daughter Emily. He knew. The black eyed bastard knew that when my blade stilled the Empress's heart and delivered her daughter to the Lord Regent's men, everything would fall to pieces. He watched me do it anyway. And now the world's gone mad. Plague grinds the city down. Corruption rots. A mad killer roams the streets by night, seeking revenge. The overseers have stormed my hideout in the flooded district. And I'm in a strange duel with a mad witch named Delilah for the fate of the Empire. I'd say I was being punished but I know that the world doesn't punish wicked people. We make our choices and take what comes. And the rest is void. I can't say I wasn't warned. Those last couple of voice lines were pretty dumb and ill-timed. The men are recovering well from the attack, but they don't understand the danger they're in. My mother warned me never to make an enemy of a witch. Corvo, here to settle her debt. You understand, I won't make this easy for you. has returned with the information you requested. He's waiting for you below. Prepare for your trip. Parting shot. Deliver or attempt the killing blow on Corvo. I, I didn't want to kill Corvo. Uh, I don't want to kill anybody. And got some charms. Corrupted bone charms are powerful bone charms that come in a cost. Locate them like normal bone charms by listening for the song they emit or with void gaze. That sounds terrible. Ports of Call, excerpt from a guide to port cities across the Empire of the Isles. Potterstead, Crystal. A small town, but the locals are charming and the ale is unmatched. Be certain to visit during the month of winds for their pennant festival. Dunwall, Crystal. Notes on the capital city could fill a dozen such volumes. All delights exist in Dunwall if you've got the coin, and all miseries if you're broke. Unless you're well connected through someone in Dunwall Tower, one of the key families, the City Watch, or the River Patrol, make sure your permits are in order. Otherwise, you're likely to have your cargo seized by Port Authority for any reason they care to concoct. Call Kenny Morley. While the Harbor Master here is particular about the kind of goods you're carrying, 
The rest of the town is more lax. Be sure to visit the inn on the rock for the best mutton stew in all the aisles. Yarrow, Tivia. The cold here will snatch the breath from your lungs, but it is met in equal strength by the civility of its well-mannered citizens. The cozy taverns are kept warm by their famously crafted iron stoves, though the northern food takes some adjustment. The jeweled aristocrats laugh and drink side by side with weathered, leathery skin farmers, clapping one another on the back until the dim hours. It's hard to make a friend here, or to truly understand the worldview of the native born, but once you do, you'll have a friend for life. Hulero, Sarconus. This city is crowded in the warmer months, and for a good reason. You'll find yourself shoulder to shoulder with scantily clad locals and foreigners on holiday. Pale skin burned pink by the sun, which somehow seems larger and brighter in Sarconus. The food in Colero is a shining example of Sarconan cuisine. And there's always music, always dancing. Hand rolled on the steps of tobacco shops, the cigars are of course fresher than the ones you've had shipped to the other parts of the Empire. Karnaka, Sarconus. The jewel of the south at the edge of the world. The city is bustling with industry after a wave of settlers from Morley and an influx of wealthy trading companies from Dunwall. Everywhere you go in Karnaka, there are new ideas, hybrid forms of music, groundbreaking theories of natural philosophy, and even extravagant delicacies made by mixing ingredients from all the known cultures. The locals work tirelessly for their coin, welcoming the elite from across the aisles. Cobbled bits of bone exit from a journal covering various occult artifacts. They say my mother was a witch, but the truth, as is often the case, depends on your perspective and your place in the world. She relied on poisons made from exotic herbs and the blowfish that live in the reef watch near Penticia. Her powers originated in hallucinogenics delivered through guile or by force to those who crossed her. There was unusual intensity in her gaze for certain, but it came from within, not from the outsider. It's what happens to anyone pushed to the absolute edge of sanity and survival, who stays there for years, then walks away to return among the sheep in so-called civilized society. My mother was crafty, but if it was anything more than powders, hidden knives, and guile, I never saw it. Like they tell children, some of those truly touched by the black-eyed bastard can move through the space between rooftops like a sparrow. Others command armies of rats or poisonous flies as easy as they wriggle their fingers or toes. The overseers are right to fear us. We warn the common folk to stay near their homes at night and keep their families close. But there are other ways his influence manifests itself. Those who serve me share in what I can do, and I suspect it's the same for Delilah Copperspoon's coven. Then there are those who can craft runes and charms. The old woman across town... They call her Granny Rags. She carves and polishes the bones of whales, stringing them together and opening them to the void until they moan like the fever sick on a cold night. I have a few of her talismans, and with each I touched, a tiny piece of me departed and settled in her. What does she gain? A longer life? Some other kind of power I don't understand? The making of such things is beyond me. I've known four people in my time who carried the mark of the Outsider. And I've known dozens more who wanted it, who stood at night in stagnant ponds or baked with the blood stowing through the graveyards. People who gutted farm animals or burned the flesh of men thinking it would call forth a void. I met a dying man once who collected runes and charms for years. He crushed them all into powder, made a paste and ate them, thinking he could gain whatever magic was in the things. His death was long and painful. I also know a woman for a Karnaka, who would trade for charms and other bits of whalebone. She cracked them apart and fused them back together, then sold them. I bought one of these corrupted charms that she swore would cause sharp metal to break on my skin, and it worked, but each time it did, one of my teeth turned black and fell out. After the third time, I gave it to one of my men. Now when he smiles, it's all bleeding gums, and I wonder what parts inside him are turning black. Sometimes I ask myself, Without these gifts, would I be a man to fear? 
Would I be called the Knife of Dunwall with my name whispered through the markets and the alleyways, through the high towers and the drawing rooms? I'd like to think so, but it doesn't really matter. As long as I bear this mark, use whatever craft I have to force my will on the world. The harder trick is undoing what I've done. Agility one, and I would love to have agility and bend time too, but nope, that's not happening anytime soon. Possibly at all. The heart dies. The heart dies. What's the plan right now? Speak with Thomas. Oh, that's Thomas. I found Lizzie Stride. Getting her to lend us her boat will be a bit complicated, however. She's in Coldridge. From what I hear, they've got enough on her to hold her for about a thousand years. Coldridge. We can use this. We'll get her out. And Stride will have to pay back the favor. We'll have our transport. Ready to leave, sir? Or should I wait? Didn't kill anyone, didn't kill anyone. A stay of execution for Lizzie. You need Lizzie Stride's boat to reach Delilah's stronghold at Brigmore Manor. Unfortunately, the leader of the Dead Eels gang is locked up in Cold Ridge Prison. And you've got to Delilah doesn't leave Brigmore Manor anymore. She doesn't have to. Which means I have to come to her. The manor's upriver, far out past the quarantine line. I'll need a ship. I've lived in Dunwall's underworld a long time. I know the players, gang leaders, madams, corrupt officials. But what I need is a smuggler who knows the river, someone I can trust. It's a reflection of Dunwall, or perhaps myself, that after all these years, the best choice I have is Lizzie Stride, and Lizzie Stride is in jail. As Dowd, you can, oh yeah, the favors. We know how this works, we've done it before. Perfect, let's talk about favors. You are disguised as an overseer. Your contacts will intercept him and send you in his place. Cool. Forge requisition. That's for stun mines. That's a rune. I mean, just being able to walk through the front door is worth quite a bit. I can go without a rune. I've got most of the powers I'm going to use anyway, so sleep dark capacity is probably a pretty big deal. Stealth. What I'll be aiming for in the future. This should get me in the front door at least. Looks like I'll need to check in with those guards by the gate.
Overseer. About time, Overseer. We sent for you hours ago. There was a problem with the waterlock. Fine. Listen up. The incident took place in the interrogation room. Cross the yard and keep going straight. Anything else is off limits. Understand? Don't go exploring. Don't speak to the prisoners. We're not here to listen to you preach. Don't forget you're in Coldridge now, not the Abbey. We asked you here for one reason. I'll be gone before you know it. Guard! Open the gate! Um... Cell controls above the courtyard. Prisoner box. I don't know. This mask won't fool on our part. We're sending three men to the firing squad, and no one knows what actually happened. Didn't they do it? <laughs> Hammer Drink said he chose a bad day to sleep in. Morris lost his nerve at the sewer gates. Neither of them knew anything. They died to satisfy the Lord mm -hmm. Regent's office. And Officer Thorpe. Seen anybody with signs of the sickness? Thorpe You're slipped in the key. Everyone knows that. He got weak. They paid him off, but he couldn't tell us who it was. And believe me, he wanted to by the end. You've seen Corvo train, haven't you? Once he had the key, there was no stopping him. And the way he went off that bridge? How do you stop a man who'll make a jump like that? Like he doesn't care. Or like he's more than human. You think he's a... Uh... I think we played that overseer noise for a reason. I think there's more happening here than any of us know. That's reasonable. Well, it's going to be awfully hard to escape. That's just ridiculous. Rats, plague, elixir, bunch of crap. Ah. Just keep walking straight, right? What happened here? She strapped in right? Good. Doesn't look like much, does she? Comfortable? Alright, we'll get this done. Let's start with how you got into Dunwall Tower in the first place. Was it one of the servants that let you in? One of the guards? Nothing. All right. Corporal, use the hammer. That's right. The smaller one. Huh. Can't really tell if she felt that. Don't want to break anything. Let's try again. How did you... Wait. You hear a kind of ringing in your ears? What's happening to her face? Is she going to... Oh no! Oh no! Shoot her! Shoot her! Dear Officer Ashfield, I would like to most humbly request access to the documents concerning the new experimental choke dust you recently found yourself in possession of. I understand this is a delicate subject matter, and I assure you every precaution will be taken with the documents to ensure they remain confidential. If access to these documents is agreeable to you, please have one of your men deliver them to my cell. Respectfully, your friend in A25. Lieutenant Wright, the hatter we brought in was trying to stash loot in the canal when we busted him. Looks like he's the one who hit Lord Bryman's carriage a few nights back. So far, he has not named his accomplices, but once he gets his turn in the interrogation room. Document everything and then deliver it to the Lord Regent's office. Make sure none of it gets lost along the way, or it's both our heads. Ashfield. Time to 
gonna go stealth. This disguise won't help me hey. if I'm caught in the restricted wing. Someone. This controls all the cell doors. Procedures following the escape of Corvo Tom. Well, well, you know what? We're just gonna skip reading the books. There's a lot of stuff there. Remember to take extra care in logging transfers. Even temporary transfer of prisoners from one cell to another must be recorded in the logbook. Ensure the logbook. Ooh, so. A logbook of all transfers is kept in the guard booth between sections C and D. Lizzie's information kept there. Cell controls quick system quick reference. Set the first tumbler to match a cell. Section number. Set the second and third tumblers to the cell number. Pull the lever to confirm. Ensure that each cell opening requests and selection are verbally confirmed. Investigate and report any suspected malfunctions immediately. Oh, I need to find the logbook. Oh, and there's a marker for the logbook. Isn't that nice? Ridiculous. These lethal bolts? Yeah, that dude seems fucking dead as shit. Where are the goddamn sleep bolts? <coughs> I went out of my way to buy sleep bolts at the start of this session, didn't I? Holy shit. So move along. All right. We need to wait for that guard to go back. So we can drag him into the room. I'm fucking baffled as to why I can't use sleep bolts, though. <clears throat> no, this is just ridiculous. Stupid rat. 
that's plague. The fuck? We got out of the goddamn doorway. Cleared to enter this restricted area. Yeah, sure, thanks. Oh, yeah, I really need some way to take you out non lethally. Keep the hatters away from the eels. The one in section D, cell 11, tried to attack that former dead eel leader again. We can't afford any additional investigations. Mistakes right now, so keep them apart. The Sokolov radio interdiction device or ARC pylon is for use only by personnel trained in proper yeah, yeah, printing whatever. procedure. I'm coming for you! It's the last thing I Where's do, Harold? I'm gonna kill you! Sure you are. Protect the law. <laughs> We've been moving people around. It's going to start any moment. And I'll die with my blood. And it wasn't. She told me inspections with the royal protector trailing after. I wish we'd taken care of him. He knows our faces. He could come back any time. Died as they lived, completely surprised. He's afraid. Otherwise, he'd come here and settle it himself. Uh, Elizabeth Stride moved to cell D twenty four. Rat, damn you! Go to sleep, go to sleep, 
the road to sleep, little god man. <coughs> you think Corbo's running around the city in a mask? That's kidding people he doesn't like. You're crazy. You're crazy. Open D21. I didn't know she had it. Why'd she take my money? D24. You kidding me? You kidding me right now? She's in rough shape. What this person do to earn themselves a nice open cell? Another guard on this level. You're making a huge mistake. Help! I'm a Someone's you. breaking out. Guard, come quick! Names. Someone Warm is trying to escape. Give me Cooper and Wilkins and Linden. They'll go into a side of the Right. Uh, make sure that nobody shows up during this whole peaceful and not at all unusual or unscheduled process. Of oh yeah, I probably need to deal with these guys at some point. 
go ahead and get him out of the way, I suppose. to the new security measures yet? Maybe. It's hard to say. Yep, just cleaning up after myself. That's what we got. You know, got him out of prison. Go ahead and go grab what I'm guessing Just is a give room. Me one chance. I'll never ask anything again. <sighs> this better be worth it. I heard that the outsider works on my. I house. didn't know she had it. Why'd she take my money? Wake up, Lizzie. <laughs> I'm not telling shit. Wait. No. Down. Is that right? Whoever sent you, I'll pay double. I've come to break you out. You can owe me the favor. What kind of favor? Doesn't matter. You'll be dead in another day here. What kind? It's just a boat trip. Up river. Past the blockades. Then you're out of luck. My boat? The Undine now belongs to someone else. My second in command double crossed me and took it. A little shit named Edgar Wakefield. It's a situation I'm familiar with. Can you walk? Get me out of this damn thing and I'll fly. I can pay you to get rid of Wakefield. It'll be my pleasure. Come on. I'll just get my tiara. Oh, Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie. Down. I think I... Oh. I'll have to carry her out. Her 
thing I got rid of most of the guards. Noticing some problems with this plan now. I have a lot of people to kill on my way out, and I'd rather not kill them. Let's see if we can just walk out. Somehow I'm really doubting it. Hmm? Of course. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you wouldn't just fucking bust your sword out when you saw a man carrying an unconscious woman. save here. See if I can get through here without having to shoot too huh? many more people. Guess that's not gonna happen. Now I'm completely out of ammunition. Much rather had the chance to knock some of those folk out, but I don't have time to fucking monkey around. All cells in Section B are under quarantine until further notice. Prisoners who have been transferred from Section B will be observed for signs of infection. Can I not jump into the goddamn water anymore? How the hell am I supposed to get over there? Wow, wrecked. Literally wrecked. Break out. Break this right out. Maintained overseer disguise, leaving no evidence behind, and learn more about the Brigmore Witch's interrogation. I did not get, did not kill anybody. Apparently, I fucking killed someone. Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, there you go. 